Hi everybody, this is Rizwan Chowdhury and welcome to another Chats with Chaudhry and I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Burton who is the CEO of uh, Astrea Bioseparations and Steve is here to talk about some of the challenges people face within bioproduction. So Steve, lovely to see you again. Yeah, good, good to see you too. And uh, there's, you know, there certainly has been a lot of changes since we, uh, we, we last met. Yeah, I mean, the last time we met was way back in uh, 2017 at uh, BPI Boston. So as you said, a lot has changed and the company's changed. So uh, before we sort of talk about the challenges of, uh, within bioproduction itself, perhaps you could give people a bit of a background, both in terms of uh, what you've done in the past and what you're doing and also about the company as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the company um, for the last 20 years has been under the ownership of Promatic Life Sciences, which is a Canadian pharmaceutical company. And at the beginning of last year, after a, a, a thorough sort of deep review of the business, it was felt that uh, it was the time was right to divest the by separations part of the business. Uh, so we went through that uh, last year as quite a, an engaging process. Uh, and the outcome was that we uh, were divested and are now owned by um, a, an equity growth fund called Gamma Biosciences. So Gamma Biosciences itself is, is owned by KKR, which is a very large uh, uh, equity growth uh, fund uh, company. Um, so um, the, uh, that, that was quite an interesting period for us last year to be you know, part of that, that, that divestment. Uh, and of course, not very soon afterwards, we ran straight into the COVID-19 uh, yeah. uh, pandemic. So that, that also raised, raised some challenges. So it's been quite an interesting few, few years. Yeah. Right. And, and what, can you give a bit of background about your own background? It's I think people would find that quite interesting in terms of how, yes. how you set up the business and where you originate from in terms of the ideas that you've got for the business and also what the business actually does. <laughs> yeah, sure. So well, my background is I, I, when I was younger, I could never really decide whether I preferred chemistry or biology. I had a, a natural interest in both of the subjects. So my first degree was a joint honours degree in biochemistry and chemistry. Uh, I had a PhD uh, that also involved chemistry and, and biochemistry in the development of novel affinity ligands and how uh, those ligands interacted with, with, with proteins. Um, following that, I uh, my first role in, in the biomanufacturing industry, I, I had a, um, uh, I was with the, what is today Alba Medics, what it then was Delta Biotechnology, and I was part of the team that was developing the downstream process for recombinant albumin, and that was the first time that anyone had developed a manufacturing process for, for recombinant albumin. So uh, that, no, that that was certainly an interesting time, an interesting time to be working in the industry. Um, more recently, uh, following that, I, I joined, uh, or should I say rejoined my former supervisors and we formed the company that was essentially a commercialization of my PhD project. Right. Uh, and um, we, uh, that initially was set up as a, as a small private company uh, and then grew to the point where it was a, then acquired by Promethic Life Sciences and then just recently by Gamma Biosciences. Fantastic. Okay, so um, you mentioned that obviously the whole uh, rebranding of the company has occurred right in the middle of COVID, obviously. So how have you as a business um, managed the whole rebranding process and also um, engaging with your customers during this very difficult period? Yes, I mean, it certainly has presented challenges. And I guess like most businesses, uh, you know, one of the first steps we took was to look at the uh, sort of distancing, the social distancing within the organisation. So we have a, a number of, uh, of our staff are working from home. Uh, and, you know, that's been a, an interesting exercise in, in itself. Uh, uh, and um, But we do, we are a manufacturer and supplier to the pharmaceuticals industry. Uh, a number of clients uh, rely on our products for the manufacture of therapeutic products. Uh, so we've maintained our manufacturing capacity. Uh, and this is in our facility on the, on the Isle of Man. This is our GMP standard manufacturing facility. Uh, and uh, in terms of the research group, we've implemented again distancing there. Uh, and uh, we, we've had rather more people working from home uh, from the research group, but we're now slowly moving back uh, back to work. 
Uh, the Isle of Man is interesting, but, you know, the, we, we've had that as a manufacturing location for many years. Uh, but um, being a, 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 a sort of an enclosed community, um, it, it had an issue uh, like the rest of the world with COVID-19, but they were able to deal with that very quickly. And today the Isle of Man is COVID-19 free. That's brilliant. So, uh, and uh, just yesterday they, they removed the need for uh, um, uh, distancing on the Isle of Man. There is no COVID-19 on the island. There are restrictions on moving and travel to and from the island. Uh, so it's considered a, a relatively safe place to be right now. Fantastic. Okay, so moving on then to talk about, you know, by production itself and the challenges people face. I know you did a webinar recently on that. So what do you see are the main challenges that people face within by production and by manufacturing specifically? Yeah, I think the, the, the main challenges now are in, in some respects not dissimilar to the challenges that the industry has always faced in, in extracting, purifying, novel producing uh, novel molecules from biological sources. But there are more commercial challenges now uh, that the industry faces. And, and I would say in particular productivity, that the speed and the yield and the time that it takes to produce uh, these biological products is, is, is becoming increasingly important uh, for, for, for a number of reasons. I, I mean, the, the, there is now the growth of biogenerics. So there is in, in some respects competition within the, 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 the genetics, uh, the, the, the bio uh, products industry now. Uh, uh, there are other, other uh, more, more traditional therapeutic approaches as well. So the, the availability of, of therapies and, and the cost of therapies is, is, is a growing factor. Um, and so the, the productivity from biomanufacturing processes is, is, is paramount today. So how have Astria actually addressed those challenges for its customers? Well, we, we, we've been addressing the, those challenges in, in, a number of, uh, in a number of ways. So in, 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 as you might be aware, there, there has been a growth of uh, the use of uh, things like disposable chromatography columns and well, disposables in, in, in general uh, to uh, speed up. Uh, the, the manufacturing process, not just the individual steps themselves, but the, the, the process overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the context of continuous processing now, where a more holistic view is taken of the manufacturing processes, uh, the, there are you know, definitely um, time savings and yield savings that are possible there. Uh, and uh, column chromatography forms a part of that. So having a disposable column, for example, um, uh, is, uh, is pre-packed. So uh, not so long ago, chromatography columns were uh, you know, re re reused and repacked many, many times. And there is time involved in doing that, the, the, the packing, the qualification of the columns before they can be used in processing. Uh, so now the, there's a, a rapidly growing demand and we are a part of this as well. We, we supply uh, ready packed columns, GMP ready right. columns. Uh, to the to the industry, so that they can be used rather like a filter. They can be uh, sort of used, you know, installed in processes and used straight away, uh, not having to go through the same packing and qualification uh, processes. Uh, and then at the end, the, those problems, columns can be relatively quickly changed out and a new column put in place, and right. the manufacturing continues. So that's a big saving of, of time. There are other savings of time here outside of equipment. Uh, and that is in terms of the, the, the types of processes that are introduced, both upstream and downstream. Now, in the downstream area, uh, I think protein A has really emphasised the benefits of a, an affinity capture step right. up front in a process. So that that's really given many advantages. And one of the reasons why monoclonal antibodies have been so successful is the development of this protein A purification platform that's usable for many different uh, an antibody products. Um, and the, the real advantage with these, with these types of materials, these affinity ca capture materials, is that it produces a very high level of purity in one single operation. Right. And the remaining steps are relatively straightforward polishing steps. So the, the advantage of that is one, it, it's a reduction of time uh, and secondly, it's an increasing yield because every step that's performed, there are process losses. Right. And by reducing those losses, by reducing the number of steps, the yield increases. So there's a, 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 a dual benefit for, for this, this type of approach. Now, protein A is well established for antibodies, but of course the industry now is looking at 
other targets, and this is a, you know, particularly in the cell and gene therapy area. Uh, and uh, as often happens, you know, downstream technologies tend to lag the upstream. Right. And um, there is now a need for improved processing materials, uh, purification materials, affinity absorbance for other targets that are not antibodies, that right. are viral vectors, for example, that are other types of proteins. Uh, and so the, the ability to develop these materials and, and provide them at scale to the industry is, is very important. Right? So you know, we have invested, uh, and Australia is, I think, is quite well um, known and well established for this in terms of our ability to uh, discover new affinity ligands, to develop those into commercially usable absorbents, uh, scale those up uh, and, and manufacture them to GMP standards, uh, and then distribute those on, on a global basis. So we've invested quite heavily in our ability to do that uh, over the year, uh, this discover, develop, deliver concept that we have and of course now we've extended that to, to pre-packed columns as, as well uh, and one thing to note about this um, there are many different ligand platforms uh, today uh, there are sort of biological approaches where you may be using antibodies or antibody fragments uh, from the, these sort of biological libraries uh, and then the, there are smaller more synthetic ligands which is the approach that we, we take uh, sort of small chemical ligands but we it's really important to understand that the the scale at which these are needed because if you have an affinity adsorbent with say 10 milligrams of ligand per milliliter of, of adsorbent that that that's uh, 10 <laughs> no that that when you scale that up to the scale of 100 liters that's one kilogram of ligand that's required right uh, so for larger scale processes and, and high usage processes uh, the the availability of ligand has to be in the multi kilogram, maybe you know tens of kilograms, right. and the way that these ligands are produced has to be compatible with that. Uh, so biological ligands are very very quick to develop, uh, but and very useful, but uh, there, there are sometimes scalability issues with those right. and and availability, issues. Uh, and that's very important as well. So we've addressed some of those uh, to our coming too. That's really interesting. So. So one final question. So you mentioned the whole process that you go through. On average, how long would that take? Or is that very dependent on the project that you're working on? It is dependent on the project. I mean, the, the, the process that we use is, is not dissimilar to small molecule drug discovery. So we use a combination of computational chemistry and high throughput screening. Right. Uh, but we, we would normally expect to find binding ligands uh, within a matter of weeks, uh, right. up to you know, nine to 12 weeks. Um, the screening that we do, the ligands are already attached onto a chromatographic support when we do the screening. So that means uh, providing small quantities of that material for uh, external assessment you know, by, by clients, for example, we can do that very quickly. Uh, but we also know that the ligand works when it's attached to a chromatographic support. So in terms of scale up, that's become very straightforward and very easy. Right. Uh, we just make more of it, basically. And, and we have a very worked, well worked out way of, of doing that, scaling up. Brilliant. Right, well, look. Oh, well, that's very, very thorough. Thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to me, Steve. Uh, for people who want to know more, as I mentioned earlier, Steve did a webinar on these issues uh, last week, which are now available on demand. And you can click to that on-demand webinar by looking at the link above this video. Uh, there are also other webinars which have been run um, over the course of the year, and there are links to those as well uh, in the comments box above. And if you have any comments for Steve or any feedback or anything you'd like to ask him, feel free to put them in the comments below the video, and I'm sure Steve will be happy to ask, answer them. So, Steve, thank you very much for your time. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I hope everybody found that useful listening to what Steve had to say. Um, and until next time, please stay safe and uh, stay well. See you soon. Bye bye.